The more I upload, the more I realize how much you guys want to see training videos. And for the first time in a while, I'm going to deliver. If I could, I would do training videos every single day, but it's hard to focus on training while you're also recording. I can't get into the zone mentally. The way I train is different from most jumpers, so it's hard to keep the camera with me as I move around from spot to spot. I do a lot of even circuit style, circuit style training and I can't just move the camera with me every set, you know what I mean? or else I would show you like a whole video. I like to train at a fast pace with little breaks in between. The only times I take more than 30 seconds in between sets is really when I'm focusing on strength or hitting a PR. I'm thinking maybe once I hit 10K subs, I can afford a cameraman and it can kind of pay for the video production. But even then I, I would still be in a loss, so I don't know what the solution is really. But anyway, let's talk about what we're actually here for, which is the training. Normally, I will never start with upper body, but my friend wanted to work out, so we started with upper body today. I just got one step from most of the exercises that I did, starting with, um, I did jogs back and forth to warm up, did some little baby pogos. Now, you should also know that this is my first time having two days in a rest in a long time. So I'm completely fresh, but I feel almost too fresh. Like my tendons starts, are starting to feel a little softer than they should and I'm just not used to feeling discomfort. It's like, I like the feeling of working out every single day. So once I warmed up, the first exercise I did was pogos and note that in between every single set, I do a set of sprints. Usually I do sets of five. So the, the distance I'm running is about 30 yards. So I'll do, I'll sprint 30 yards. I'll jog back, sprint 30 yards, jog back. Uh, with that, I'll do a progression of pogos. So I'll start with pogos with my ankles locked. No, with my knees, with my knees not locked, but like I try to get not too much flexion in my knees. And then as I progress up, I, I introduce more and more flexion in, in my knees. And then I go from doing a more, what's the word? It's not extensive, but the other one. Pretty much more, um, Dang, what's the word? Intensive down to extensive. Uh, but yeah, that's it really it for the pogos, but there's nothing special about them. I just do, I was doing a lot of them because I was fully rested and I wanted to my, my tendons to get used to jumping again. I probably did over 300 jumps, but not all of them are like high intensity jumps, right? Because I also mess with the intensities to increase intensity as I go throughout my, my pogos. So, Overall, I probably did over a hundred max effort pogo jumps in different variations. And then I did a couple of standing vertical jumps as well, getting really deep into it, which I'm not very good at. Like even when I let my, like when I watch the videos, I don't get very deep into my, my standing jumps, which is something I have to work on. I'm more of a velocity jumper, so I'm used to using my momentum and speed to get up. After these, I did go into depth jumps, which I didn't record. I, was, I only did them because I was waiting for the hip thrust machine, which I never ended up using. And it was it was really busy that day. And so I ended up just squatting. I was like, you know what, I'm gonna just squat today. Before I go into the squatting, something I realized when I was sprinting was how much that middle quad muscle is working when you're when you're sprinting, especially from like, a, like if you're sprinting from the, like I don't, I don't, I wasn't using blocks, but I was sprinting from the ground to get that drive phase. So I didn't realize how much because because I was fully rested, I'm not used to, I'm used to just my legs feeling sore and I don't really know where the soreness is coming from. But in this case, I could feel that I forget what the middle muscle of the quads called, but that was just working the whole time. Like that was like probably my, my most sore muscle from sprinting. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not sprinting right, but that's what I felt the most. I think because in the dry phase, your your quads are used the most, especially because your hips are, are involved too. So it's not just Whereas your other quad muscles aren't connected to your hips, but yeah, that's just an observation I made. This is one of the only days where I've had no knee pain whatsoever. And my squats, like this is my first time squatting when I was, when I'm fully rested. So I could actually see what I'm capable of. I did bike though, but I don't think it was that far. I think it was less than a kilometer. So I don't think it would have affected much. And I did back squats, which I haven't been doing for a while now. Look, I feel more comfortable front squatting. It just doesn't feel natural to me anymore, like now that I'm not doing them at all. So even when I was doing the back squats, I was doing them like I was front squatting. So you can see how far my knees go out. It feels 
I'm not doing it with good technique. And even still, I got up to, I got up to a two play back squat jump, two play jumping back squat, jumping, I got up to a two play jumping back squat. And normally this is like difficult for me, but it actually felt pretty easy. And then on my last set of jump squats, my right knee just had this pain. I think it's cause I, I increased intensity too much on my first day back. So I think that's why I started hurting, but every set before it wasn't hurting. And then just that set, I went to jump, but I felt like, I just felt yeah like some throbbing pain in my knee. So I was like, oh, I gotta stop that. But if it wasn't for that, I would have been able to do 10, no problem. Like this is the strongest I've ever felt. Um, and then I went into, I just did normal squatting to lower the, the intensity so that I don't hurt my knees. Cause I don't know what happened there, but normal squatting felt fine. But so I ended up doing, um, well, I was doing three quarter squats the whole time. Even for the jump squats, I was doing three quarters. But then when I look back at the video, like a lot of them were like half reps, not even three quarters. And that was my, um, oh. Yeah, I, squat, I squatted three plates for the first time. It felt pretty easy, like, I knew, I always knew I could squat three plates, but I just, just have never attempted, usually because I'm always sore and I overtrain. But yeah, I tried the three plate back squat. I know I could do full range of motion, but my plan was to only go three quarters. And that's what I did kind of, it looks more like a, like a half squat, but I mean, I know I know I could have went all the way. Like it didn't feel like I couldn't go go all the way. Whereas before my last PR was like 275. That was the last time I maxed out. I know if I max out now, I can do like I might even be able to get like 365. I think I could if I really went for it. I mean, I'll get it when I get it. I don't really care to hit PRs that much. I'm just mainly focused on training. But if I do get that 365 PR. That means I'll be squatting almost exactly twice body weight, which is pretty insane. But yeah, after that, something really bad happened. I almost somebody, but I didn't, but I didn't, but I almost did. And I also broke the gym mirror. So what happened was, it's my first time squatting three plates. So, Normally, if you forget that how physics works and you take all the weights off of one side, nothing really happens because there's not enough weight for it for the bar to <clears throat> for the bar to tip over. But this time, I took all three plates off of one side, and the bar went yee, and it almost hit someone in the head. But it like it spun around and it missed his head, and it went into the mirror. And yeah, the rest is history. After that, I went home. After that, I went home. All oh, the shame I felt. I walked. I did the walk of shame. But yeah, that's the end of my training for the day. Um, if you want to see more videos, I will try. But the only reason why I thought to record it is because it was my first day back, and I knew I would be working at a slower pace. So I thought, why not bring y'all with me? But I'll try to make more videos. It's just, it's just hard to. Like I gotta lock in. It's hard to lock in. Even yesterday, I wasn't fully locked in because it was my first day back, but as I increase the intensity and whatnot, it's gonna be really hard to carry the camera around while I do that. But yeah, if you like the video, I appreciate it and subscribe and whatnot. And yeah, I'm out.